Hi everyone, welcome back to Geeks for Geeks. In this video, we will discuss the problem K palindrome. So let us read the problem statement and see what we have to do in this problem. So problem says that we will be given a string of length n. So the string will be given which will be consisting of n characters and we have to find if the string is K palindrome or not. Now a string is called a K palindrome string if it can be converted into a palindrome by removing maximum or you can say at most k characters. So suppose that we have a sample test case where we have a, b, c, d, e. Let's say we have got a, b, c, d, e. Then after that uh, we have got c, b, a. Okay. So let us, let us say that if we have got this uh, particular string as the input and the k value is given as 1. So the problem says that if by removing maximum one character uh, in the worst case, if the string becomes palindrome, then it will be called as a K palindrome. So you can see here that if I do what? If I uh, remove, so you can see here that this A and this A will be same, then uh, uh, B and B will be same, then after that you can say that C and C are same, now D and E are not same. So I can say that maybe I can remove E or D any character. So suppose that if I remove E, then the resultant string will be what? It will be A, B, C, D, then C, B, A. So this is palindromic in nature. So you can see that the k value is basically 1 and uh, if I remove one character that is let's say e only or I can remove uh, d also anyone then my uh, string will become k palindrome in nature. Okay now let us uh, have a look at the second example. Suppose if you see the second example here so we have got a b c d e f let's say we have got what we have got a b c d e f and then after that uh, we have got CBA. So let's say after that we have got CBA here. Now in this particular string I have been given the k value as what 1. So by removing one character can I make the string palindrome. So you can see here that A and A are same then B and B are same okay. Then after that C and C are uh, same. Then you will be able to see that D, E, F. These characters are there which are not same and I have to remove maximum uh, two characters because if I remove let's say E and F both then only the string will become palindrome but I am only allowed to remove maximum one character so that is why this is not a k palindrome uh, string right so how can we solve this problem so in order to solve this problem we can use one dynamic programming concept that is longest palindromic subsequence because if I want to remove certain characters right so I will try to remove the minimum number of characters as minimum characters as possible right I'll, I'll try to get the count of the minimum characters that I need to remove such that my string can become palindrome okay and once I have that counter so I will check that if my counter that I am getting the number of characters that I want to remove in order to make the given string as palindrome if it is less than equal to k then I can make it uh, as k palindrome otherwise I cannot for example if suppose that you have got what if you have got uh, a b c d e then after that uh, we have got a b c d let's say a b c d e then c b a so we have got c b a after that okay so if you will see here what i can do is i can always uh, apply two pointer logic uh, like a uh, two pointer logic in dp and this a and this a are same then b and b would be same then uh, c and c is same and one character is different right so in that case my uh, length of the longest palindromic uh, substring that i'll get will be how much it will be one two three four uh, right, uh, right, 5, 6, 7. So you can see that the uh, length of the longest palindromic substring would be 7. So I am getting the length as 7 and total n value was 8. So the number of characters that I want to change is how much? 8 minus 7 that is 1 and my k value will be given as 1. So the number of characters that I want to change is uh, nothing but uh, 1 here. Right and I am allowed to change 1 character. So that's why I will say that the answer is uh, definitely possible and the string can be made as k palindrome. So we can use the longest palindromic subsequence concept in order to solve this problem. Uh, let's quickly try and implement it up. Okay. So initially we'll be given the string. So what I can do is uh, since in order to find the longest palindromic uh, subsequence what we do is we take the like we pass the original original string as well as the uh, reverse of it. So what I will do is I'll declare let's say another variable let's say string st2 and let's mark it as str then after this what I'll do is I'll ask it to get reverse so I'll say that I'll reverse st2.begin uh, comma what comma st2.end so I'll reverse the uh, string so I will be taking the uh, LPS and in that LPS function what I'll pass is 
I'll pass the original string as well as the reverse string. Okay. Then after this, what I can do is I can initially say that we can take a DP uh, array. So let's say uh, if I can uh, declare one DP array. So there are two ways of declaring. Either I could have passed it in the function or I can declare a global DP array. So since the constraints are low, so I'll declare a global DP array of uh, of uh, thousand and one uh, size, uh, right? Then after this, what I'll do is initially I'll mark my DP array as minus one, indicating that it is not calculated. So I'll pass the DP array, I'll pass minus one, and I'll pass size of uh, DP here. Let's pass size of DP, right? So after this part is done, then we need to call the recursive function, and uh, we will say that uh, in this particular function the count, count uh, will basically indicate the number of characters that I want to change, the minimum number of characters that I want to change in order to make the string as palindrome. So that will be nothing but n minus, I'll call the recursive function and in that recursive function, I'll pass the original string, then I'll pass the st2, then after that I'll pass n and initially I'll start from 0, 0, index, okay. Now, once I get this counter, that is the number of characters that I want to change, minimum number of characters that I want to change in order to make my given string as palindrome, so if this counter, let's say if it is greater than k, then it is not possible. So I'll simply return 0. Otherwise, if it's possible, then you will simply return what? You will simply return 1 here. Okay. Now after this part, let's implement the uh, LPS code. Okay. So we'll say that uh, we'll write a recursive function here. And in this case, first of all, we are passing the string. Let's say str, original string that was given. Let's part, pass it with ampersand. Then after that, I'll pass what? I'll pass a string ampersand st2 as well. Then after this, what I'll do is I'll pass the n value. Then I'll, after this, I'll pass the i and I'll, after this, I'll pass the j also. Now, in this particular case, what I will uh, do here is I'll say that if my i is equal to n or j is equal to n. Okay, so if I uh, exhaust any of the strings, then I cannot get anything in common. So I'll directly return 0. Otherwise, what I'll check is I'll check that if the dp of i j is not equal to minus 1. So if this particular state is uh, there, uh, like... If this particular state is already calculated, then I'll not calculate it again and I'll, I'll directly return the value, right? Otherwise, I will check. So suppose that if the ith character of the first string is the same as the jth character of the second string. So if they are same, then I can say that I can move forward in both. So I'll return, like, then I'll do what? I'll say that uh, my answer would be what? So let's take one answer variable here. Uh, let's say initially as zero, right? So I'll say that my answer would be what? My answer would be nothing but you can call the recursion for what? You can pass the str, st, str, as well as st2. You can pass n, then you can pass uh, i plus 1, then you can pass j plus 1 here, okay? And uh, like this is how you'll calculate this particular result. Otherwise, uh, suppose that if, if the ith and the jth character are not same, then you have two choices. The choice one is that you can call the recursion for str, st2, okay? And then you can pass n and then in one string you can move forward so either you can move one step forward in the ith string and then you can remain at the same jth character or what you can do is in counted uh, choice 2 you have the choice that you can pass the str you can pass the st2 and you can pass n and then you can keep your i at the same place and you can move your j by 1 so you can do j plus 1 right now after this my answer will be what it will be basically the maximum of c1 comma c2 here right so this is what uh, we can do and uh, once this is done then what I can do is before returning my answer, I'll say that I'll store this particular DP to it so that I don't have to calculate it again. And then after this, I'll return the answer here. Okay, so let's try and uh, compile this code to check if it is working fine or not. So currently it is running for the sample test cases. Okay, so I should write st2 here. Okay, it is getting, okay, so we are getting an error here. So let's try and see what's the error. Let me compile this again and check. Okay, okay. So first of all, I'm having the uh, string st2 in which I'm storing the original string, uh, right? Then I am reversing it from the beginning till the end. Then after that, initially I've marked my dp as minus one, right? Then I have my count. Count will be n minus the recursion. I'm passing the st1, st2, then I'm passing n, then 0 comma 0. Then if the count that I have, it becomes greater than k, then I'll return zero. Otherwise I'll return one. So this also works fine. Let me just check if there's any mistake here. So what I've done is if uh, I'm passing the original string uh, uh, str and st2, then after that I'm having n and then I'm having i and j, i and j. So if any of the string gets exhausted, so I'll return zero. Otherwise, if the dp of ij is not equal to minus one, then I'll return the dp of ij already calculated state. Okay, uh, otherwise I will check. Uh, so I'll mark my answer as zero. And yes, 
if they are same uh, so what uh, the mistake that i have made here is that if suppose that the ith and the jth character are same then i need to increase the uh, palindromic length by one so i i need to write one plus recursion of this thing now it should work fine let's submit this code and it should get accepted so i just missed adding one whenever both the characters were uh, same so now it gets accepted i hope that you have understood this problem clearly the time complexity for this uh, problem uh, will be uh, nothing but order of n because uh, uh, order of n square why because we are uh, iterating uh, using two pointers right so the recursive code uh, even after applying dp will take order of n square time and space complexity will also be order of n square because we are using uh, dp array here i hope you have understood it clearly please mention uh, understood or plus one in the chat thank you for watching this video